pleased today to welcome Alice and Dave Shorette, who are the authors of the third edition of 30 Walks on Bainbridge. And I don't know if I hold this book up, you can see it. Um, see it. And as Alice has asked me to briefly tell you what kind of walking I do. And I go out and walk every day. And my walking has changed somewhat in the last three months. And a couple of times a week I work a walk with a girlfriend and our goal is to walk four miles. Um, and we walk all over the island. Um, so I was thrilled to get this book because um, as I live in Winslow, I used to, I, um, I have been concentrating more on the south end of the island and I used to live in Rolling Bay area. So I had done the Sunrise um, Rolling Bay area walks. Um, I have also looked at your book for years and I'm thrilled that you're here today to talk about it because some of the walks on it are different in this uh, third edition of the book. Um, I am, uh, I was at one time an owner of the first edition, but somehow or other that having moved a couple of times since you published it, it's got lost. I think it got borrowed and uh, <laughs> it, it, they're so fun that uh, it's hard for people to give it back again. <laughs> So I'm, I'm delighted that you can, are here today and you can talk a, a little bit about your book. And, um, and and after you've done that, I have some questions. Um, so over to you, Alice and Dave. And please, can you start off by telling us why you did this in the very, very first place? Well, that was, I don't even remember how long ago that was. That was 2014 yeah. years ago, 2006. Yeah. So, well, part of it was that uh, when our kids were little, um, with one of them in particular, walked all the way around the island when he was 10 or 11. And then the other one did a lot of walks too. And he kind of thought, and I was on the park board at the time and I thought, you know, there's a lot of walks here and people don't know about these walks. Um, why don't we figure it out? I've also done a bunch of fishing books too. So it was easy for me to, to uh, think maybe we ought to do this. So we started doing is walking all these walks. And then we kind of realized that uh, there was a, our purpose was to get people out uh, and gather support for um, uh, saving land. And uh, at that time, the park district was, was after trying to save a lot of land. And then I was on the Open Space Commission. Um, when was it first published? I can't remember. 2006. Yeah, I read about then and we were, we were um, buying land. So we wanted to basically boost support for saving land on Bainbridge. And we thought one of the best ways to do it, Alice, and I thought one of the best ways to do it would be to put something out there that showed people where to go and where to walk and, and make some pretty <laughs> heavy handed suggestions about uh, what's going to happen if you don't save it. So that's, that's kind of why we did it. And um, there's a lot of work in the beginning. Oh, okay. And uh, because, you know, it's, and then we thought, well, if people are gonna be interested in walking, let's find some historical uh, information too. And I was really interested before you all got on, Bob was telling us that when he's out walking on a trail system that's over by the cemetery on the South End, he came across what he thinks is the site of the old Bla Blakely School, right, Bob, would that be it? Okay, says yes. Uh, so that's right. Everyone's, everyone's muted. Uh, I don't know if you really need to do that because I'd like to hear what you have to say. Uh, My first question. That, we thought, uh, keep going. Go ahead. Well, I know uh, the other reason we 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 did this book is so that people would uh, really get outside and enjoy the place we live, which we love, and uh, share it with everybody. So that, and the land trust was not, was the only organization at the time really acquiring land. The city had just decided to do an open space bond issue and buy a lot of property. And so trails were, and there was a system of informal trails. This island has always had lots of walkers, lots of people, but it was walking on walking illegally, basically, on uh, old trails. So that's why we did it. Just 
and kept doing it because there are more and more trails. Uh, and, and Dave can talk about some of the, in this edition, we have new ones. There is one at, uh, on the north, on the south at Newt's Pond. Uh, one of the walks talks about how to get there. It was newly acquired. There's only really one parking place, but you can do a beautiful uh, forest walk up there. And uh, it's off Toe Jam Road. And so the instructions in the book show you kind of how to get there and then how to do the walk. Dave likes to do it for, yes, well, dragonflies seasonally are beautiful there. Uh, because, another new walk is, no. yes. Go on, keep going, another new walk. In our first, ah. Another new walk is the uh, Country Club. It isn't new, but it is going along the road, along Country Club Road on the far south end and then up Upper Farms Road and around. And at very low tide, you can go around Restoration Point. Uh, that walk, it's, it's probably the most historic one on the island because of what happened geologically to Restoration Point, uh, where you can see, you can see it's like mountains or cliffs of uh, where the earth folded in an earthquake and uh, you can see the fault. Yeah, it's a beautiful walk, and right? that's one of the best ones on Bainbridge, really. It's you go up over the, there's, you know, if you don't want to go uphill, but geez, everything I hear is everyone's walking four or five miles a day, a little hill is going to bother them. Yeah. Uh, or this group, anyway. Maybe <laughs> younger people don't want to do it. Um, and it, you get, you can see uh, all the way north, and you can see all the way south. It's one of the few walks where you can really see Rainier, Baker, and the Cascade Range um, all at once. So that's a new one. Um, yeah. And then we have the, the other one that's new. Go ahead. Oh, we just had a, we had a question okay. come in on chat from Lynn Murphy. She was asking, isn't Country Club and Upper Farms private property? No, the, the, the road, road isn't. isn't. You get to a certain point on Upper Farms Road and there's, you can't go any further um, unless you really are motivated. <laughs> <laughs> to go past the no trespassing sign. So yeah. theoretically, Upper Farms Road goes all the way through to uh, um, the uh, junction of Tojam Hill and uh, Pleasant Beach Road. But there's a sign that shows you where, uh, where, where it becomes private. But there's a lot of, it's, it's basically a country road walk where, and it's public road all along the southern uh, part of Country Club Road. It's actually eroding a bit and uh, and it's quite walkable. And then up Upper Farms Road is a public road also. Yeah, maybe the question is whether going beach. around Restoration Point uh, on the beach is public. But the truth of the matter is that, um, I try not to say too much here, but that's open to the public. And uh, most people don't know it. At very low tide. Uh, yeah, all the property owners in the country club, none of them pay waterfront taxes because the waterfront there is, quote, jointly owned open space. And it is available to people who want to walk around it. Theoretically, it's a, an archaeological site that uh, geological archaeolog archaeological site that is only available for uh, guided tours. but. We've been walking around there forever, and you want to you want to go um, at a minus tide. It's a little difficult. You have to get down a bank to get down there, but it is it's like nothing nothing else uh, around here. Definitely worth doing if you it's, feel strong. It's legal at minus tide. Yeah, yeah, and even at other because, tide. Yeah, there, there is a gate across Country Club Road as you go into the Country Club area that's a, yeah. a metal gate across the road. So that tells you it's private property. Years that, and years. That's right, but you don't, in the walk in the book, you turn at that point and go up the hill. 
over uh -huh. to Upper Farms Road. That's all public. So maybe that answers the question. Yeah, we're not asking to go through the gate, no. although we'd like to ask that. No. <laughs> uh, and go into the country club and walk around there. That, that's a no-no. Oh, what else? Okay, other other new. Um, I think I've covered them all. Right, another one. Then maybe all of you have appreciated this one. Is the uh, oh oh the waterfront? This isn't new, but on the waterfront trail, what the book talks about on the downtown Winslow waterfront. Since our second edition, there are three. There are two new parks. Uh, so when you walk. If you begin at Waypoint, you all know where Waypoint, the little tiny park. Uh, the woods just below that are called Waypoint Woods. And those are now publicly accessible with a trail. And we have a trail, there, there is in the book it shows you how to begin that trail, go through the Waypoint Woods and then go to the ferry terminal property and begin your walk along uh, the waterfront. Then you get to Waterfront Park where the senior center is and you walk along the edge of the water, continue walking, following the signs, and you ultimately get to Moritani Park, which is a new park uh, with where there was an old strawberry uh, field. And the neighbors in that area are maintaining that it was a gift from someone uh, to, to all of Bainbridge to become a park. Then you continue along the water to the Cannery Cove Park and all the way to really to the head of the bay. Yeah. That's not new, it's just. That's just the, some of the parks are new. Yeah. Who, who was it who um, donated that uh, Moritani Park? Uh, Glenn and Nancy Haber. It was. It's the. Um, they have a Fletcher name for Bay. That. Fletcher Bay Foundation. Yeah. There was a family that. Yeah, Glenn was the president of the Parks Foundation. Just. I, yeah. I understand that it was. For a, what it's a, worth, he was the president of the Parks Foundation. The family that uh, donated the land. Well, their for their foundation did. The foundation bought through a foundation the land from yeah. the Moraton family. The Parks Foundation, which different than the land trust, the Parks Foundation uh, buys trail easements. It buys, uh, in some cases, they can be the the gift, the place where a person gives a gift of land for a park. Well, in that particular case, though, the 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 um, Fletcher Bay Foundation, which was which is a family foundation of the Habers. Uh, bought the park, the Moratani Park, which the city and the uh, and the Open Space Commission and uh, Land Trust and everybody had been trying to buy for years and years and years and couldn't buy it. Uh, that was bought by the uh, the uh, Fletcher Bay Foundation and given to the Parks District. So that's how it, that's how it got how you got it. And Waypoint, a little different. That's a thirty year lease. Uh, Parks Foundation. Uh, facilitated a 30 year lease between um, the ferry district and um, the parks district. So that's the parks district operates and manages that. That was, it's pretty interesting, pretty neat because uh, the ferry system had no interest in allowing the public in that land. And I, I assume a lot of you have been in there. It's got some of the biggest Madrona trees uh, on mm -hmm. the island. And um, John Paul Jones, who's the sort of the helping architect, uh, landscape architect on that, it has a lot more work to do, but he, he finds there's some really significant uh, tribal uh, things going on in there, notably the, the grove of Madrona trees. Mm -hmm. So that, that's another way that things have gotten added to the waterfront trail. Well, we'd, yeah, we'd I remember when it was, uh, remember when they dedicated it, when they had the dedication, they had the family uh, family member who donated the land, as well as the parks people, but also a Native American, a Suquamish, uh, came th uh, uh, also blessed the land as well. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah um, we've had a couple more 
We've had a couple more questions come in on chat. Um, and also I have a suggestion since, it, you know, like the presentation is kind of informal this morning. Do we just want to open it up for, our, for questions from people, make this more of an interactive um, hour? That, sounds that would be a good idea. Yes. So maybe I could, I could ask my first question. And I saw in the back of the book that I think that we can buy this at Eagle Harbor Books, am I correct? Where you can buy your new, the new edition? Yes. And I'll, yes. It talks at the back of at the fact that the, the proceeds from the book go to the Bainbridge Land Trust. So on behalf of the people of Bainbridge, I want to say thank you for that. And one of the things it talks about is this Lost Valley Trail that has not yet been developed, that is at the head of Eagle um it's the at uh, the head of eagle harbor could you please tell me where at the head of eagle harbor this um lost valley trail will be hopefully <laughs> happy to tell you that um if you when you go down white way and you go to the the big curve at the head of the bay there's a little road there that yes. says private property, no trespassing, et cetera. That's, that sign is not correct. You can drive up that little road and you can park right in front of what used to be the city, which is the city's wellhead right there. Uh, I mean, it's a little hard to, t to describe it, uh, but you can park there uh, and the trail begins right there. It's a little bit hard to find. There's a, there's a um, uh, cyclone fence there. But lots of people know where it is, uh, and you could. That's in my mind. That's maybe the most beautiful valley on Bainbridge. Uh, the trail starts there, and it's kind of uh, made by. It's not a, an official trail, but you can certainly walk it, and it's been improved. Somebody got in there and <laughs> did a lot of work on it. We we know who it is, uh, but it, the city doesn't seem to object to it. And you can go through there. And what happens is you go it's, it's, through Lost Valley. It's about a mile and a half through it. Uh, it's, it's, and it's a little steep in places and a little rough in a few places, maybe a little wet during times of the year. But then you go out, out through um, uh, easements that have been acquired both by the open space and then by the Park Foundation that takes you all the way out to Fletcher Bay Road. When you get to Fletcher Bay Road, you could you have to walk up Fletcher Bay Road a little ways to uh, a sign that says trail. You're going south on the road. And that trail is brand new. And that was acquired by uh, the Parks Foundation through acquiring easements from various property owners. And you can take that and it comes out on a road called Kojima. And I'm probably giving you too much information, but Kojima takes you over to Vincent Road, which is also known as the road to the dump. <laughs> uh, and from there, you have to walk on the road. But uh, recent developments are that um, the Parks Foundation's goal has been for a long time to connect Winslow all the way to Gazem. And Lost Valley is a key component of that. When you get to Kojima, we're working with a landowner there that will connect this we think, we hope, to uh, city land and then on into Gaza. So it's going to be a big, big deal. But if you just want to go to Lost Valley, there's kind of two ways to do it. You could go and park near Kojima Road, which intersects with um, uh, <clears throat> Vincent Road, and park, find a place to park. Walk up Kojima Road, and on your right, you'll see a little trail sign. That's the trail that will take you all the way out to the head of the bay. The other way is to park at the head of the bay, ignore the no trespassing sign, don't worry about it. Um, he's not gonna come out and shoot you uh, and just walk from there. So I don't know if there's, I don't believe there's a sign there, you have to find it. So but probably to be safe, go to Kojima. It's, it's when you come out of the head, the sound, we, occasionally your sound breaks up. So when you get to the head of the bay, do you come out where the Dahlia stand is? Do you come out on the, as you, uh, do you come out to the, the east of the, west of the, 
do you go do you come in from the north or do you come in from the west there's a dahlia stand at the you head can, of the bay which yeah, way right. you go right you go right okay. by that dahlia stand there's a little road that goes in from the dahlia stand in toward yes uh the north uh and that's where you go you take that road in and then you come to the city city property and the it's okay. actually i know what you asked yeah okay you can also get there from carmela which is uh up off finch road could you could you please put the those two names into the chat box the chat box is a little area on the bottom of your screen and you can type in questions as like I've got a couple of questions okay. I'd like to ask you from people who have been muted but I'd like to ask a question I, I'd appreciate if you'd put those two names of the roads in there that would be helpful okay so okay. one of the questions ha is from Je you want to go on how does one obtain the third edition I only see the first edition on Amazon oh you have to go to the local bookstore the eagle harbor okay. bookstore and it's there or if it's at dana's show house which is across the street on winslow way or it's at wilderness all along winslow way there are three stores that carry it but i go the bookstore is the eagle harbor bookstore and you can call them or go in the store and get it Thank you. Amazon doesn't carry. Oh, it Sorry. only carries the used ones. And of yeah. course, Amazon just gets the money. Nothing goes to the land trust when you buy a used one. Okay. Yes, in the first edition of the book, I took a trail that the neighbors objected to. It was up by Nukes Pond. It was across the road further up the top of um, up in that area and the neighbors obviously didn't like it and tried to block first edition which kind of amazed me because i thought it would have been public property and they couldn't have done that did that happen often after you publish um it may only have been with the first edition after it got published people didn't took objection to the fact that this was public property and they blocked it That's a really interesting question. I don't think I've ever heard anyone of you all say, say that no. any of the trails that were in the book, the actual trails, were uh, not open to the public. What happens is that people go on the trails and then they see another one. And uh, of course, I'm always encouraging them to take it <laughs> because, and, and then someone would object to that. Uh, you can, there are all kinds of intersecting trails little old trails that have been on Bainbridge for years and years and a lot of those are are little entryways from somebody's house to get onto the main trail hidden coves trail is certainly that way there are several from those houses that are in there that they've got their own little path that goes to the main trail but otherwise i've never heard anybody uh, anybody say that are there other questions Yes, mm -hmm. Paul Bryan's at, I made a comment. I got into trouble climbing over the gate at Country Club, I think he's referring to. The point is to get down on the beach from yeah. a private area and go round the point on the beach, right? But I know that just before you get Actually, to the gate on the road, you can just slow down. Yeah. Uh, I meant public area. On the road, you yes. can climb down. Yeah, you can climb down. That, there's just before it gets to that little curve, there's a decent place to get down. It's a little hard going, but it's okay. Yeah, that's where you go before you get to the gate. If you go clear around Restoration Point, you can't get back up onto a public place. You gotta come back to that point. Yeah. Now, if, if there aren't any other questions, I have a little, a little more inside information um, for since you guys took the time to do this. Um, there is, uh, and I think Bob mentioned it, he was out there on these trails. Well, there's a whole set of trails next to the, next to the Blakely Cemetery uh, that have just been, that whole area, 60 acres, yeah. was just purchased by uh, a couple on Bainbridge. And they have uh, donated all the trails on it to 
uh, through the Parks Foundation, and then it'll be ultimately donated to the Park District. The Park District hopes to redevelop all those trails uh, this summer. So they're in there, they hope to get in there and work on them toward the end of August and improve them. So you'll be able to walk from the Blakely Cemetery through a whole, there's about almost two miles of trails in there that most people are walking, like Bob knows about them. But they've always been open to the public just because nobody prevented them from doing it. But um, the new owners, brand new owners of that uh, have acquired, have, have granted the right to the public to use those trails. Some of them will be redeveloped and some of them may, they might may, may uh, block a couple of them off temporarily at least. But in the meantime, that's going to be, a, I mean, it's, it's a huge gift to the public. So if you feel like walking somewhere that's not in the book, yeah, get on out there and do it. You can, it's right across from Heyday Farm. Bob knows, right, Bob? Bob. <laughs> Bob yeah, shoot off uh, one. Actually, I just I just walked that with my group today. Um, I work walk with a Thursday group, and uh, we started out at the cemetery, and then uh, actually they started out at three T, came up the hill, and uh, I started at the cemetery. Some of the rest of us, mm -hmm. and we yeah. walked down New Sweden, uh, to um, and around and back down and around. We, we weren't the only trail we weren't on. We were on with that side trail that goes that parallels um, New Sweden. Yeah. Bob Shulock asks. Nice Bob Shulock asks, is there a way from Nukes Pond to Fort Ward Hill? <laughs> Good Inter question. Interesting if you and ask. That might be, uh, you got, uh, it's possible that that's where you ran into uh, uh, the, the problem. I think you might have done that. You were trying to go from Newt's over, right? Over to Fort yeah. Ward. I don't know. You mentioned you got a neighbor yelling, there is not presently <laughs> any way to go uh, through public land from Newt's to um, Fort Ward, but. There are trails two that are on private property. They're not marked no trespassing. You have so to go you can do information. You have to go down to Darden Lane, and there's a little trail that goes off. You follow or if you follow Darden Lane to its there's end. A trail. This is a school oh, called social trails because people are using them, and no one tries to keep them off at this point. Uh, and they're used by all the neighbors. That anyway, that takes you out south, and I can't remember the name of the uh, road that it connects to. But you you end up walking around through the developed Fort Ward area and get over by the bakery, and then you're over toward Fort Ward. But trying to develop trying. that that's a one high on the list of getting that connection. So there are a lot of negotiations and meetings trying to get that connection between Newt's Pond and Fort Ward. Yeah, I'll just say that we've got three out of the five necessary links agreed and we're, it's just, you do, you can imagine this if you have um, five pieces, five sections that you've got to get through to get from A to B, notably from Newt's Pond to uh, Fort Ward, you get three or four of them and then somebody says no. Yeah. And you have to try to go around them or you have to try to persuade them in the long run to give you that link. So those of you who are out there walking, it's great to talk to people and tell them, gee, it's really great that people are willing to either grant an easement um, or, uh, or, or willing to sell them because the Parks Foundation is out there to do it. And the Parks Foundation transfers those easements to the Park District. That's how you get through Lost Valley all the way to uh, Gazan, we hope, for example. You asked uh, what our favorite uh, place to walk was. And uh, I yeah. don't know, I've, I've been on that 
for quite a while and been working, walking with this um, Thursday morning walking group. This one of the old Ron Williamson groups. And um, we, uh, my favorite mm -hmm. still is um, Gasm Lake. There's just so many places, lovely um, trails in there and uh, so many different ones that, uh, that, that are, it's, it's lovely and go down to the pond, down to the lake and stuff like that. Different times of the season. It's a lovely time to walk, lovely place to walk. Yeah. And that too is being uh, expanded. I think that is a, a recent land trust acquisition, a whole, there's a whole new area that the, there's a social trail in there, but there's a whole new area that's going to be open in the next few years once. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> anyway. Well, land trust has acquired some land in there and they have a trail and you can go on it, but they're not wanting you to do it yet. Because they're not ready. And we're it. hoping to connect a GASM, as I said, through, uh, uh, through Lost Valley all the way to Winslow, which would be just a great walk. It's a long ways, but it's just a beautiful walk because you go through Lost Valley. Mm -hmm. So we'll, we'll be able to, if you'll go through Lost Valley from you, since you like Gazan, um, go down Vincent Road to Kojima and you'll find your way all the way through to uh, the head of the bay. Other favorites people have? Well, Bob at the support says, is there a way to get to the remains of the old Japanese village from the uh, cemetery? Which uh, you must mean the Blakely Cemetery, Bob? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. Well, um, yeah, that's Yama, which was acquired by the Open Space Commission. And, and uh, that had a lot of relics in it and was an archaeological study for years so it was off limits you couldn't go in there now you can you can go there but you there's no trail that connects to it uh, that's i think that's on the park district's uh, long-term plan is to connect yama to uh the fort to the blakely harbor to fort ward trail you know when you park across from blakely harbor and you take that nice trail that goes up uh to fort ward off to the left at some point in time, there would be a connection that would go up into Yama. But you, I think you can go into Yama now if you want to, just to see what's there. I think they, they've finished. I, I checked the, the Park District's website, but there is no trail to it. Uh, and it, it's potentially one of the really great little trips off of uh, uh, when you're walking from Port Blakely to Fort Ward to get in there because it's such a historic site. They, they're long-term plans. The Historical Society uh, uh, wants to put in um, uh, reader boards and put in a, maybe a whole trail system inside Yama where you have all the, everybody probably has seen the pictures of Yama. It was a pretty well-developed Japanese village. There's some uh, Ophiros in there still in the ground. So it's kind of protected, but I think it's now open to the public if you can figure out how to get there. You can park right next to it on the Fort Ward Hill Road. It's just down in the valley, but you wouldn't know there was anything there, I don't think. Yeah, that's, it's a lovely, that's a lovely area in there. I was fortunate enough to be part of the uh, staff on OC for that, uh, for the dig, or a couple oh, years ago. And it was so interesting, it was fascinating. Um, you can go in there, I think, but it's it's so overgrown, It's it's not, it's not the easiest way to walk, I'll tell you that. Yeah. I, and yeah. they, have a, they haven't abandoned Great. it. I mean, they're, they're, I think they're planning on going back in there again. Oh, see. And we're trying to get a historical uh, art, art history museum, too. We're involved. When I was taking yeah. the pictures for Natural Bainbridge, um, I got invited in there while they were digging and took photograph of pots that had just come out of the ground. And one of those appears in the Natural Bainbridge book. So if you Great. want to see something of what it was like that, that's in that book. So Neat. Paul, he, uh, would you like to say a little bit about the beach walks? Yeah, uh, beach walks are always a controversial subject as you probably know. Um, for the last three to four weeks, I've been posting daily pictures 
from Bainbridge Beaches on Facebook, getting a lot of warm response. And of course, I knew it was going to happen as soon as I started showing these. People say, well, how do I get there? <laughs> Where is it? And of course, yeah. well, I'll tell you what our favorite walk is for the beach. We're on Arrow Point. So we go to Beach Drive, which we call Beach Driveway because it's just a little gravel driveway that goes down to a very nice a set of stairs onto the beach. And on either side, of course, it warns you in, in detailed language about the private property. So you've got a width of a few feet that you're supposed to confine yourself to. But if the tide is out, we'll go down toward the water and walk all the way to Skinner Road and come up on the Skinner Road and then come back through the park. It makes a really beautiful loop. But of course, if you're at Skinner, there's also signs on either side saying, you know, private property, do not trespass. And I know from my wife being on the road ends committee some years ago, that the legal situation is very mixed on the island. I mean, some people own their beaches, some don't. Some are preserved, some aren't. Some people care, others don't. So there's no generalizations you can make. But my, my own rule of thumb thing is, make sure the tide is low, don't get near their houses. Don't mm -hmm. sit in their lawn furniture. Don't discard garbage on their beach. Uh, <laughs> you see somebody smile and wave, um, and and you're usually okay. We had an interesting encounter when we got to Skinner last month. Uh, there's that big brown house that is uh, quite a mansion that's on the south side of the Skinner Road end, and the uh, woman that has moved in there only a couple of years ago, Medicine, she was delighted to see people walking. And, and I said, well, I just posted about this road and you may see more people coming by. She said, that's fine. In fact, a couple of girls showed up and sat on the bench while we were there. She told me that she was told by the real estate agency that the previous owners had sold the easement for the road end walk there for a dollar to the city. Well, I said, well, my memory was that the people on either side of that were fighting in the court to keep that road in from ever being opened. So my guess was, and I'd like to see if you know anything about this, that they, they I know their case got rejected. The road end was established. They built these huge spike fences, 10 feet tall on either side. Um, but then the place has changed hands. And I think what happened is new owners came, the fences are already in place, people are using the access, but um, it, the, it, uh, technically it's still their property. A lot of people don't understand the difference between having an easement on something and owning it. And I was thinking if I were in that position, I'd say, hmm, I'm paying income tax, I mean, a property tax on something that's on the other side of my fence, which the public is using, why do I want that? I'll sell it to the city for a dollar and lower my uh, property tax. Anyway, that was that was my guess at what might happen. Yeah, I think I can answer that question. That that actually is the road end you're talking about that was fought for years and years is at Fletcher Bay. I know. Uh, on the other on the south side of Fletcher Bay, and if you go there, you're talking about real hospital signs. They're still hostile, but you can get on the beach there. And of course, at uh, low enough tide, you can go either direction a ways. You can actually walk all the way to, you know, all the way to Battle Point uh, from Fletcher Bay when the tide's low enough. You can actually cross the mouth of Fletcher Bay, believe it or not. Now, there's water always running out of there, but it's got to be a really extreme low tide. The, the one that Skinner Road rode in, that has always been a real a legitimate road end. The people do not own, the adjoining property owners do not own those road ends. Those road ends are county property. Uh, so you, if you can get, just in general, if you can find a road end, you can get to the beach, but you're right. If you want to go either direction and go for a long walk, uh, you're way better off at a low tide. Uh, just, just to mention, the, I think the best low tide walk on Bainbridge uh, aside from that one, is from Fay Bainbridge, which is obviously a legitimate entry anytime at a very low tide. I always consider it has to be a minus 
all the way to Rolling Bay. If you yeah. if you don't go to the and tide comes in, it starts getting pretty rough toward Rolling Bay. But in the rest of the way, it's just sand all the way. It's beautiful. It's warm. And uh, so I think it's a good three three miles or more uh, one way. We like to do that every year if we can. That's a good tip. So many great beach rough, rough beaches. Mm -hmm. The walk I was talking about can get really rocky and hard on your ankles. But if you get a low enough tide, you get down below the rocks, you're on sand all the way. Yeah, that's a lot of that on Bainbridge. Not, well, another, another good one is uh, if you're into beach walks, is uh, go down North Street, that road in. Uh, and there's a little bit of parking just before you get to the, the actual road in that's been, there's a pretty nice trail down to uh, cement bulkhead. And then there's actually somebody carved steps into the rock down there. It's really cool. And you get down there and you can go um, all the way across the front of Merton Cove um, over to Skiff Point. It starts getting rough at some point over there. Or you can go the other direction yeah, uh, to your right, all the way out to Yomal Point. That's a great one. Yeah. Uh, you don't see that many people in that one, but that's, a, that's public all the way, both directions. Well, as Paul says, at low enough tide. But you can get a map of all the road ends on Bainbridge Island, aren't they? Yeah, the city, the city has a city has a, a right. site. So. Lynn Murphy um, makes the comment. She loves the cross island walk through the Grand Forest water edge to water edge, although steep on the west side to beach. If I was still on the correct trail, is Lynn still with us? She would. She. Um, she wanted to know if she was on the right trail. So Lynn, can you unmute yourself? I've lost you. Oh, she's got no sound. But um, can you, do you think she was on the right trail? Okay. Uh, well, I'm not sure, in a little more detail. You start at the... Uh... Where did she say she started? Um, she, she walked through the Grand Forest water edge to water edge, although steep on the west side. I'm not very certain where that is. Well, in the, in the book, you, you come out at, you go through Battle Point and you go out at, you go out at Fer Ferrydale, but you can also go out Skinner what Paul was just talking about. So if you wanted to go from uh, uh, the east side of Bainbridge at Merton Cove, that's in the book, all the way to the west side. I'm not sure how she got it's steep on the west side. She probably got off somebody's, maybe got on somebody's property. I'd like to know where it is. Sounds kind of interesting. <laughs> uh, but basically what we're talking about when you're going uh, east to, or across island, you're talking about Ferrydale at the end of Ferry Dell, you're on the beach, you walk up Ferry Dell through Battle Point, Forest of Sky, Grand Forest, and then over um, on Wardwell all the way to Merton Cove. So that, that's definitely in the book. I don't know if, how she, I think she might have been in the right place. I would also say that um, another goal of the Parks Foundation is to go from Miggs all the way through uh, the uh, to uh, Grand Forest has never been accomplished. A few of us have slogged through and tried to do that, but that's another way, going to be another way at some point in time because the Parks District has <clears throat> got a permit to go through MIGS at the north end and connect up to the Wildlife Corridor, which is owned by the Land Trust. Land Trust has agreed to put a trail through that and it'll come out at the northern part of the Grand Forest, and then you can go all the way across. So if you're looking so, for another route, some we might we might all be gone before it happens, but we're <laughs> hoping for it. Won't some of that be boardwalk that is awfully wet? Yeah. Oh, wow. To be exact, 242 feet <laughs> from the wildlife corridor over to the Grand Forest, and then in MIGS, probably another two or three hundred feet of, would be boardwalk. It would be it would be beautiful. It is and gorgeous. Almost no, no roads 
uh, the entire route. I wanted to say something else about the Ferry Dell, if you don't mind. We live right across the street from it. So we're in there all the time. And it wasn't until this summer when there was a very low tide that I walked out and saw the remnants of the old piers from the ferry dock that used to be there. And yeah. there were about eight of them, yeah. ooh, low tide. And I took a little, I took a photograph and I posted it and everything. But we also have a historic photograph of the old ferry Dell ferry dock with passengers waiting. Uh, it was sold as a greeting card. Great. And we have it framed up in, in our house. So I put that all together in a post on Facebook and got people interested. But that's people are always looking for historical things, and that's that's one that's interesting. Yeah. Well, that and goes other, in the next version. Yeah, you know, we'll do part. that. And the other thing on that trail, and we do mention it in the book, is the old Bill Tra Bill Taft tree, which doesn't have a sign by it, but it's almost at the bottom of the trail just before you get to the beach, up to the uh, west, to the left as you're going down, uh, the, the tree is huge and yeah, you can't really get up to it, but it's the biggest, at one point it was the biggest Douglas fir in Puget Sound. And it, um, and it had, they had, uh, church services there. They had the people coming on the ferry boat would come over and gather around this magnificent tree. On the so it had its, its top was uh, blown off. So it's not as tall as it used to be. And the fun part of that for me is that there, it was named the Bill Taft tree because it was so big and Bill and President Taft was very yeah. big. And I found there was another very big another tree in Oregon, which was also called the Bill Taft tree for the same reason. Okay. <laughs> Other people have questions or things you'd like to... Uh, well, Lynn, Murphy, or... Lynn Murphy did say, I did start at the Wardwell Merton Cove area. There was a trail to the West End and the others were there as well, but it was very steep. So that's why she that she was wondering if she was on the right trail. Um, Wardwell, the trail on the there was a trail on the west end, and the others, um, there uh, and others were there as well, but very steep. That might be the trail going into the Grand Forest from Wardwell. Yeah. It's pretty steep. Yeah, that is steep. Yeah. Yeah. Has anybody else nice. any questions or would like to comment on their favorite walk? I think our biggest excitement is about the what we've been hoping for for a long, long time is this uh, Meg's going through Meg's Park on Boardwalk through the then connecting to the wildlife corridor that the land trust has now by boardwalk and up to um, the Grand Forest. Yeah, that that is a really exciting one and it probably will be another five years, do you think? <laughs> We're hoping for three. <laughs> but the oh. Lost, Lost Valley Trail probably will happen in the next couple of years. Two yeah, years. the city is it's complicated, but I, I think people will be able to use it. If we make the connection to GASM, you'll be able to do it. Another one that just happened, if you're on the STO, oh, you yeah. know, the, uh, the cement trail that took so much heat when it went in, uh, there's a, a, a donor who's been fixing it up, and it's really getting to be kind of nice to walk on. And what they just did is they just made a connection to the John Nelson Trail, which is just north of Vineyard Lane. Uh, so you can, if you're walking on the STO, you can take that little loop through um, North Vineyard Lane on the John Nelson Trail. How many, I assume some of you have been, have been on that John Nelson Trail. Has anybody been on the John Nelson Trail? No. It's, it's a beautiful approach to the ravine, the Winslow Ravine. You got a hand up there. One hand. I see she. Bob, you must have been there. Paul it's, has. 
Yeah. And and Paul's been there. So wh where do you get yeah. off the job? Okay. Yeah. Well, now, yeah, I haven't I haven't been well, there. Okay. You go to Vineyard Lane. Yeah, you go to well you, yeah, you, you can either walk from uh, Winslow Way north on on the STO. You know, which is the Seattle or the uh, sound, <laughs> sound, to Olympics. sound to Olympics paved path. And when you, if you do that, they've done a lot of landscaping on it, and there are flowers that bloom there now, off and on. But, and believe it or not, there was a, a flicker nest right over the top of it at one point in time. Um, and it, about halfway through it, or three quarters of the way through it, you go over the, uh, you've gone over the Vineyard Lane Bridge, and you've gone a, past the intersection where uh, you go up the hill to Vineyard Lane. There's now an entrance to John Nelson Trail. And it's beautiful. That's a, that, that trail in the ravine is really nice. Uh, everyone hopes in the long run that we might be able to acquire uh, the uh, 10 acres that are in the ravine. They're owned by a property owner on the, near Ferncliff. And then you would be able to walk through the ravine all the way to uh, TNC or not to ACE. There's already a little trail from ACE that goes to Deer Cliff. Um, and yet, here's yet another one. Uh, when you walk the STO, after you get past this little entrance to the Nelson Trail, you keep going. And just below, uh, just before you get to McDonald's, there's a little connection that will take you through the woods behind ACE all the way over to uh, Ferncliff. We're, we're working on that one too. So I got a lot of things going on. That's brand new. It just happened like in the last two weeks. Yeah. That work. Oh, we're getting okay. started doing it. Yeah, yeah. So we we're hoping to, we want a trail for everyone's backyard if no. we can do it. <laughs> Not to scare anybody. So if you've got, if you've got ideas, if you know of other trail possibilities, keep in mind the Parks Foundation and the Parks Department, the Parks uh, Department itself is always looking for connections. And I'm sure all of you, some of you are intrepid walkers, know about these little social trails that go from A to B. And in fact, the city and Park District has made a map of every one of these social trails they know about, and they would like to acquire as many of them as they could, in particular, those that are major, make major connections between uh, Park District trails or other trails. So I'm your guy. Get a hold of me if you know about them. Yeah. Is there anything else we can tell you or answer any other questions? Uh, Sheila wanted well, you to know that the yeah. tree from okay. snow falling on cedars is on the very, the Ferrydale Trail too. And Paul Bar Brian's favorite walk in the new edition is the m and &E Farms walk. And I have to agree with him on that. <laughs> That's mine too. Yeah, <laughs> and um, oh, yeah. Lynn, Murphy, Lynn Murphy says she's been exploring the Clear Creek Trail system in Silverdale, which is another fun day. Mm -hmm. And I like going to oh, Port really Gamble. Cool. And yeah. then there's a new the new trail system at the new parks um, um, uh, on Heritage Park that's got a, a, a paved systems yeah. there. Um, Bob Sherlock says, Yeah, one of the really nice ones is, is you go up Big Valley and there's to keep going. This Big Valley to what? Big Valley, yeah. Big go, you drive up Big Valley and uh, you're about you no know, halfway through, and off to your right is this little trailhead and it goes up through an old homestead. Maybe some of you have been on it. And uh, it's beautiful, really, really nice, and goes up to the top of the hill. You can't get any views, but then the trail continues on in three or four different directions through the Heritage Trail system. That's a really nice one. And thank God, geez, I mean, what they did in North Kitsap is just amazing. How many thousand acres they've saved and how many yes. miles of trail in there. It's just really inspirational. Yes, Rob Gelder, who is the county commissioner, talked about that about a month ago when he was on this program. Yeah. Bob Shulock wants to know, how does one get a map of the social trails? Is it on the Park District website? 
No, they would. I, I don't know if they're going to let you have that map, uh, <laughs> but I do know that. Um, I mean, I worked on this myself because they got all the the really bad boy, notorious off-trail walkers together, <laughs> and, and bad girls too, by the way, uh, who are always going off somewhere they're mm -hmm. not supposed to be going. But and there is a map they put together. Um, how do you get it? Well, Bob, you're just going to have to get all the city you. somehow or other because they've got it. Uh, <laughs> but a lot of those social trails are not marked, no trespassing. So you can go on them. I'm sure we all do all the time. And uh, you should do that because um, if trails are used enough by people, uh, the public's reluctance to give them up to development is, is strengthened. And also, one of the things you might know is that now a subdivision, any subdivision of three or more lots, and I'm probably going to get this wrong, uh, has to, if there is a trail connection possible through those through that subdivision to two existing trails, the city makes them do it. It's an ordinance that uh, the city passed. It's one of the really good things the city has done. It used to be the planning department would say, "Oh, you're gonna you're gonna put this development in. Well, we'd like to have a trail through it that connects to." this street or that street or, or this trail or that trail. And most people, most developers would do it. But a few years ago, one of them just said, no way. And the city was unwilling to take them to court because they were afraid that the voluntary uh, developers who are willing to do this wouldn't do it anymore if they realized they didn't have to. Then they passed this ordinance. Uh, and this ordinance says, in effect, if, I, if you have a piece of land and there's a trail um, or even a connection to a trail on one side of it and there's a connection on the other side, we're going to see to it that you have a trail going through your subdivision that connects these. And that's a great thing. But again, it's sort of a matter of uh, the public emphasizing the necessity of connections. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I want to thank, if there are no more questions, I want to thank everybody for coming today. And I want to thank Alice and Dave for all the hard work they've done to help the land trust on Bainbridge. So please go we, to your local bookstore and yeah. buy the book. We also the want to thank Paul Bryans for all of his photographs in yeah. this book. Uh, so there was a team effort. And we also, Cheryl Talam is not on this call, but she volunteered is a superb designer and she volunteered all of her time to design the book. So, oh, and Douglas, wow. Douglas Slingerland, who is the GIS, is the map person at the, at the park district donated all to do those beautiful GIS maps. So it was a huge effort on many people's parts. So thank you. Great. And thank walk. you for doing it. Yeah. Get out, there, Get out there and walk. <laughs> when it's out, it's a trail. Uh, Janet or, or, or Bob, for purposes of attendance, I'd like to know who number 74 is. Who has 74 who is in on, the, on their um, phone? 